UN 영어 뉴스 Turkey earthquake death toll could increase eightfold WHO says Dramatic social media footage from the first quake hitting Turkey and Syria The death toll from a strong earthquake in southeastern Turkey near Syria's border could rise eightfold The World Health Organization has warned The toll which currently stands at more than 3,400 people has increased rapidly since the first earthquake struck early on Monday morning. About 12 hours later, a second powerful tremor hit further north. Rescuers have been coming through mountains of rubble in freezing and snowy conditions to find survivors. Countries around the world are sending support to help the rescue efforts, including specialist teams, sniper dogs, and equipment. The U.S. Geological Survey said the 7.8 magnitude tremor struck at 04.17 local time at a depth of 17.9 km near the city of Gaziantep. Seismologists said the first quake was one of the largest ever recorded in Turkey. Survivors said it took two minutes for the shaking to stop. The second quake, triggered by the first, had a magnitude of 7.5 and its epicenter was in the Elbistan district of Karaman Maras province. <coughs> Many aftershocks are still being felt across the region. The number of dead and injured from both Turkey and Syria has increased rapidly throughout Monday. The WHO has warned that those numbers are likely to increase as much as eight times as rescuers find more victims in the rubble. We always see the same thing with earthquakes, unfortunately, which is that the initial reports of the numbers of people who have died or who have been injured will increase quite significantly in the week that follows. The WHO's senior emergency officer for Europe, Catherine Smallwood, told AFP, Mrs. Smallwood added that the snowy conditions will leave many people without shelter, adding to the dangers. Many of the victims are in war-torn northern Syria, where millions of refugees live in camps on both sides of the border with Turkey. There have been dozens of fatalities reported in level-held areas. Thousands of buildings across both the countries have collapsed and several videos show the moment they fell as onlookers ran for cover. Many buildings that were as large as 12 stories high are now flattened. Roads have been destroyed and there are huge mountains of rubble as far as, they, as the eye can see. Among the buildings destroyed was Gaziantep Castle, a historic landmark that has stood for more than 2,000 years. The BBC's Middle East correspondent Anna Foster, reporting from the Turkish city of Osmania, near the epicenter, described a devastating scene. It's absolutely pouring with rain which is hampering the rescue efforts. There is no power at all in the city tonight. We are still feeling regular aftershocks, and there are still concerns that there may be still more buildings to collapse, our correspondent said. Turkey's energy infrastructure 
has also been damaged. And the videos have emerged showing large fires in southern Turkey. Social media users claimed they were caused by damage to gas pipelines. Turkish Energy Minister Fatih Donmez confirmed there had been serious damage to the infrastructure but did not mention the explosions. Turkey lies in one of the world's most active earthquake zones. In 1999, a deadly quake killed more than 17,000 in the northwest. The country's worst earthquake disaster was in 1939, when 33,000 people died in Turkey's eastern Erzincan province. One Karaman Maras resident, Melissa Salman, said living in non earthquake zone meant she was used to being shaken. But when this tremor was the first time we have ever experienced anything like that, we thought it was the apocalypse, she said. In Diyarbakir, northeast of Gaziantep, a search is now underway for people trapped in damaged buildings. The Turkish Red Crescent, Crescent has called for citizens to make blood donations, and the organization's president, Kerem Kinik, said on Twitter that additional blood and medical products were being sent to the affected region. Following an international appeal for help, Turkey's President Erdogan said 45 countries had offered support. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for an international response to the crisis, saying that many of the families hit by the disaster were already in dire need of humanitarian aid in areas where access is a challenge. The European Union is sending search and rescue teams to Turkey, while rescuers from the Netherlands and Romania are already on their way. The UK has said it will send 76 specialist equipment and rescue dogs. France, Germany, Israel and the US have also pledged to help. Russian President Vladimir Putin has offered help to both Turkey and Syria, as has Iran. Turkish Interior Minister Suleyman Soylu said 10 cities were affected by the initial quake, including Hatay, Osmaniye, Adiyama, Malatya, San Lurufa, Adana, Diyar Bakir, and Kilis. School has been suspended in those cities for at least a week. Diyar Bakir, Turkey, people are still trapped under the rubble. A volunteer with the White Helmets Rescue Group, which operates in the level controlled areas of northwestern Syria, fought back tears as he described the devastation in Sarmada, near the border with Turkey. Many buildings in different cities and villages in northwestern Syria collapsed, he told the BBC. Still now, many families are under the rubble. We are trying to save them, but it's a very, it's a very hard task for us. We need help. We need the international community to do something, to help us, to support us. Northwestern Syria is now a disaster area, he added. The earthquake was powerful enough to be felt as far away as Cyprus, Cyprus, Lebanon and Israel. Areas affected by earthquake, 0417 local time.